Hello, welcome to CM Videos. My name is Dr. Michael Okereke. I'm making this video because a lot of you have requested that I make show you how you can place randomly fibers within a representative volume element. And this is the essence of this video. And it's really about showing you about a software that I've written for doing this and that's called Multicalgen 2D. This is the first version. So please sit back and relax as we get into this video. Now, to, as we get started, what I'm going to be talking about in this video first is about what is this multi gen 2D, what on earth is this about, then two, how do you actually run the code um, and what outputs do you expect to see. The third thing is we'll look at a bit, bit, a bit around the features of the software and, you know, practical examples from micromechanics where you can use some of these ideas. So that's what we're going to be dealing with in this video. Now, multi gen 2D, I've called it a multi gen narrator for 2D representative volume element. So this is what they could basically the logo for the software and it essentially what it is is that it's a MATLAB based software that generates random uh, positions of fibers or voids or inclusions within a defined representative volume element. For our purposes here, I'm just focusing on it as a fiber, but you can use it to generate voids, you can also use it to generate, you know, other kind of particulate inclusions. So this will be the subject of other videos that I will make. But for this video, really, I'm just using the idea of fibers to illustrate what we mean here. So it generates at the end a Python script, which you would then be able to use say, to run up, run the model in Abacus for, for you know, analysis of, of your system. So that's what we, we're going to be doing in this video. Now, the code is developed within MATLAB and has to also run within MATLAB. So when you get hold of this code, what do you find? So basically, you will find these files. The first thing you'll find is a list of case studies, examples to just help you understand what we're trying to do. And basically, these case studies will be from unidirectional composite, particular composite, and other kind of systems like that. Then we'll also have the main uh, multical 2D gen workbench. So this is kind of where most of what we are doing is going to be based on the workbench. This is a documentation file that helps you understand in details what's going on with the model. And then there's a little readme text file, which just some kind of licensing issues and all that. So that, those are the four things that you get in the box when you get hold of this code. Now, the next thing we'll need to look at is if you look more into the workbench, which is a Monte Carlo Gen 2D workbench, WB, Two things are there, and this is what you'll be using most of the time to run your model. And I encourage you to run the model in this workbench. So the first thing here is the control deck file. So you've got a control deck file, which is where you control the behavior of multi gen. This is also where you specify the properties, um, the kind of simulation you want to run. So I'll show that later on. And of course, the main multi gen executable, which is kind of the heart, the engine of this code. Now, there is a documentation file that I've also provided to go with this. So as to, if you want to learn a little bit more about what's going on with this code, please look at this documentation file um, that specifies a little bit more information about technical details behind the code design, how the code runs and for that case studies and all those interesting bits. So please do look up at the documentation file. You will also see it in the, in the download section of this video. So I've got to say also that the link to download the code is in the description section of this of this video. So please do check check out for that. So I'm going to illustrate this using a case study of a unidirectional composite, which looks like this. And the parameters of this composite, the virtual domain would be something that has a length and a width of 200 by 200 microns. The fiber diameter will be 50 microns and the volume fraction is 35%. The metric system polypropylene, the glass fiber is what the fiber system, and I'm going to allow for fibers to appear on the edge. But this is the case study that we're going to do. So let's jump into uh, MATLAB and begin to show how you can do this. Okay, so here we are in, in MATLAB. And when you get the hold of the code, obviously, this is what I was talking about. This is kind of what you will see in the code. So the case study, the Monte Carlo gen, the documentation for the readme text. So if you open Monte Carlo gen there, so 
I'm right, going to right click on this DAT file, which is a control deck file. If I right click on that, open it as text. So basically, this is the control um, window where you control what Monte Carlo Gen is going to do for you. The executable is a P coded file, so you can make changes to it. There's nothing you can do to it. So really, most of your operation will be right within this control deck. So here, remember the system we're going to deal with is of length 200. So I'm going to change that to 200. The width will be 200 and the fiber diameter is 50 microns so I'll, I'll write that the volume fraction is specified there the origin of the rv you know the, which is the left bottom left hand corner of the rv i'm setting it as zero zero okay now the inclusion file the inclusion file in this case the fiber system so i'm calling it an e glass the metrics is polypropylene i'll write that and in the end so if it's a ud composite that you want you specify ud composite so maybe let's do that so let's call this a ud composite for example now so i'm going to leave all this default the only thing i would like you to look at here is this periodic material and it said it's set at zero which means i want to apply periodicity of material constraint so the idea is that that point we made that i want to have fine fibers appearing on the edge so once you've done all that two ways that you can run this code either you go here right click and click run or you come into the command window and just type the file name multical gen all of the file name and then you click enter so what this will do is that it will run through and then it will generate all the fibers that we need and gives you the plot so this is the outcome that we're looking for so the volume fraction is 4.959 percent which is about approximately 35 this is the size of the rv the number of fibers within this is 79 circular fibers and the diameter is 15. so this is the geometry the domain that we are looking to get and then the things that you find here is that, okay there are those edge fibers as we said those edge fibers if they appear here they have got to be repeated on the other end so everything about this looks right and we are happy with this so i can close that for a moment now if you look inside the current folder you'll find that it's already created a folder for us with all the information so you've got the rve 2d with the 79 fibers in circular inclusions the window size is 200 squared because it's 200 by 200 if you open that then you see okay there's another soft folder with only the extension of 01 because every time you run a simulation it creates a sub folder for you so if we just go back there and just run this again so if i run it again it will run through and every time it's running to at the base here is displaying result for us and then creates a completely different random arrangement you know which is fine so if you go back into the code, you'll find a second one. So this is important because if you're trying to do a parametric study for a, the same design, then you could run different cases and then you get your result. So if you look inside here, this is kind of what you will find. So there is the Abacus simulation, which contains the Python script that we're interested in. So if I right click on here and say, okay, open it as text. So you could see this is a Python script that is generated for us that we're going to use to run the simulation later on you know to bring it into abacus so maybe let's do that so if we copy this link okay so the first thing is if you open using notepad plus plus you could see the code that we talked about that has been generated for us so you can then study it and see you know different parts it's been kind of commented properly so that you can understand what is going on with this so this is not the interest so if we open abacus so what we're going to do is that if i'm cop i'll copy this particular script then right within abacus i can go to the base here and paste it so this is either abacus so we've already generated the code and with monte Carlo gen and you could see you are able to bring your model right away into abacus and run the setup so that's the beautiful thing with this code so it shows you an easy way to create your model so you could see rve fiber with propylene and the ud composites so the materials are there all you need to do is to open them and, and input the properties and then you can do the remaining so basically the shell of the model that we're looking for has already been done for us using this this code so with monte Carlo gen you quickly visualize the result as a matlab plot then you can then bring it into abacus so that you can visualize and begin to carry on with your modeling from that stage so that's that's that now if we go back to matlab the environment where monte Carlo gen is so we could see the things that we have done what if we want to do some other things so we want to play around with this code to make some changes so let's look at certain features associated with this model so the first feature that i want us to to explore is 
What if you want exact volume fraction? You're not that, that concerned about the size of the RV. So what do you do? So what you have to do is to chase, change this variable called revised RV size. Because to get exact volume fraction, you just need to change the RV size a bit so that your volume fraction can be exact. So let's do that. Okay, so if we come back into the code and we want an exact volume fraction, because if we, you know, to be honest, if you look at the original values that we got from the previous case, our volume fraction was 34.9, not exact. And that's because we specified an exact length and width, but for modeling purposes, maybe you really want an exact volume fraction. So what we need to do is we go to this variable that called revise RVE. So I'll set it to zero, which means Yes, I want to revise RV. And then I can then go ahead and run the same model again. So if we go back to that, so run this model and then see what we'll get from it. So it will run through and now we have an exact volume fraction. However, our RV size has changed a bit, but this is okay, you know, because we're going to bring this into Abacus anyway. So the RV size will not be such a big deal. Uh, but at least you're sure that you're using the exact volume fraction so that when you start comparing your model later on uh, with experimental data, then you're sure that your volume fraction is exact. And all you need to do here is to go into the code and change this RV size. So I'm going to change it back to one uh, because that's the default position. And then let's go back to another scenario. So in this next case, what we're looking for is if I don't want to have any fiber appearing on the edge, you know, there are instances when you want to do this, you don't want any edge fiber. What do you do? So there is an option called periodic material. So you want to change that and that is this option. So currently, if you set it as zero, it means that yes, I want fibers appear on the edge, but if we don't want that, what do we need to do? So let's go back and see how you can do this. Okay, so if we come into the code and we want to do the instance where we are looking for periodic material. So if I change this to one, and then you run the code again. So if I click on there and run. So what this will do for you again is it will create a, a domain, but this time around the domain it will create will have no boundary fiber at all, no fiber on the edge. So this is excellent because then, you know, it's easy to apply boundary conditions on them and, and, and all that. So there may be a case where this is what you're looking for. So the next case is just a little bit of, you know, in terms of plotting and showing your results. So let's say we're looking for different metrics colors and fiber colors so that you have a, a better result or something nicer to look at, you know, for publication purposes. So what do you do? So there are these two values called in color, which is inclusion color and mat color, which is a matrix color. So we need to change that. So let's see how we can do that. So again, within inside this code, what are we trying to achieve? So if you look here, there are these two options. So currently set a W for the ink color, which is inclusion color. So that means it's currently white. And then the matte color is black, which is currently K. So what if we decide to do, maybe let's say the red color for the metrics has to be in lowercase and maybe a gray color for, you know, or maybe blue color. So let's say, we want blue for the metrics, something completely different. So for whatever reason, maybe you're interested in doing that. So if we run the code now, it will plot the result, but with this distinctive color, color format. So something quite different, you know, maybe the kind of application or your color scheme looks like this and this is what you're interested in. Um, maybe what if we try something like GR gray for the metrics and maybe, so let's try C which is cyan. So again, the link, the kind of this, there's a code here to help you in terms of what you're trying to select. So if we run that scenario again, and then basically what it will do is for us, it will show us a, a completely different scenario. So again, you've got the inclusions as cyan in color and gray for the metrics on the others. So that's another feature of this code. Okay, so the other thing that may also be a good thing for us to think about is what if you're looking at plotting a multi-layered composite? Because there may be instances where you want to layer up fibers, uh, laminates in a represent volume element simulation. So what if you want to do that? So, and really the clue is around this parameter called the origin RVE. So you need to make some changes on that. So if we then look, for example, let's say we're looking at a system like this where the multi-layer composite have got 200 by 100 for one of the layers and another 200 by you know, 50 for the second layer. So what do you do for this instance? So clearly 
what we have in the first case will be a zero zero at this coordinate position and the second one will be 100 because what, you, what is going on here is that the height of this first one is 100 and this point would have to be 100 on the y-axis so if there is a third one you want to put in so this third coordinate position will have an origin of 150 0 150 so how do we do that within our code so okay the dimensions are different so in the first instance you've got 200 by 100 200 by 100 so if we go back to Monte Carlo gen and then we can see how you set those up so with Monte Carlo gen for the first system is 200 by 100 okay and it's got an origin of 0, 00 so this is fine so what we're going to do is that we're going to run this model and create that layer of composites okay so you could see it's 200 by 100 so this is the first layer of our multi-layered composite so remember and then it creates it basically here and it creates the python script as well for you to play with to recreate that scenario so if we then for the second case we know that the second case is 200 it has a 50 diameter you know width thickness and the diameter is still the same our origin will now change from 0 to 100 so you change the origin of the rv for the second case and you run the situation simulation as well Monte Carlo will create the second case now with a smaller thickness but then it's offsetting it to start from 100 so that by the time you stack them up and put them into abacus and stack them up they will appear on top of each other nicely so this is how you do a multi-layered um, simulation so the final feature here is where for some cases maybe you're interested in clustering of fibers so you want fibers that are kind of tightly packed as against fibers that are loosely spread out so the option that we need to use to do that is this minimum distance option and this is the distance between the two closest fibers so you want it to be a random scenario however you want the two closest fibers to touch so when they are going to cluster obviously you want that distance to be small when they are going not going to be clustered, you want that distance to be large so this is what we are going to do so in the first instance we're going to work with a minimum distance of one percent this is where we're looking for a real clustering of the fibers and then we'll see what that will happen so let's go back into Mat Mat Monte Carlo gen and see how that works so within Monte Carlo gen obviously the default minimum distance is always is 20 percent so but i want to make it a, as, as low as one one is the smallest distance that you can get you can't get less than one because if you get then the code will not allow you to run so let's go back and, and create a fiber system of 200 by 200 with an origin of zero zero as usual and then if we run this case so i right click and run so what this will do is that it will create the default scenario that we are looking at so you could see that certain fibers are kind of clustering together nicely so this one is barely touching so you've got there is a nice clustering of fibers this is important if you're looking at studying where the effect of fiber clustering will have a, a problem on your simulation so this kind of comes in nicely so we've got sets of fibers that seem to be barely almost touching themselves which is clustering of fibers now what if we change that minimum distance to let's say 40 percent and then we run the case again so the idea here is that you want the system to see a loose not no more tight packing of the fibers but a loose packing of the fibers so that that initial touching that we saw earlier on will not happen so that's what we are looking for remember if you're going to make this minimum distance to be large the simulation will take longer because the model is trying to make sure that the fibers are not going to be closed and this is what you get here so clearly there are no fibers that are touching themselves so the interactional effect of the fibers is not very high here as against in the previous case so that's the other instance of if you want to use Monte Carlo gen to explore the effect of fiber clustering this is another way you can do this so that's all that I wanted to show really in this video useful again if you like this content please do subscribe to this channel and smack, smash the like button so that you know the YouTube algorithm continues to spread this message and people can use this code again if you look at the description section of this video you will find more information about this code if you really want to understand what's happening within Monte Carlo gen in a more technical fashion i made a video which you will find here to help you understand this a little bit more so please check that out thank you for your interest in this channel and catch you in the next video bye bye